Tick tock, time to rock. How is everyone doing this evening, morning, afternoon? Actually, it's all irrelevant now, right? Because you're all stuck inside, <laughs> so you don't even know what you don't even know what time of day it is if it wasn't for this live stream. So you can set your uh, you can set your internal clocks based on these nightly live streams. I almost always go live eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Yesterday we talked about a claim of Jehovah's Witnesses, but is also believed by uh, certain Orthodox, uh, more Orthodox Christians. Uh, in other words, there's nothing really, you know, it's not it's not some great heresy or something like that to believe that Jesus is uh, the Archangel Michael. It just doesn't seem to be true from from the Bible. Um, but uh, the way the way Jehovah's Witnesses believe in it, then it becomes extremely problematic. And it was uh, basically some Jehovah's Witnesses who kept sending me the claim, claiming that uh, whenever I talk about Jesus, they'd say Jesus is the Archangel Michael. And so I told them we'd go ahead and do a live stream about that. And we did and didn't go well for people who believe that Jesus is the Archangel Michael. Well, also, last night um, started, uh, we, we asked people what topics you'd like us to cover, and uh, some of you said Mormonism. So we got some requests for Mormonism um, during the show last night. And I don't know a lot about Mormonism. I've uh, sat down through the, I think it was six presentations with, uh, with some Mormons. I think they only made it to number four before they were told not to come around anymore. And uh, notice, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I, I was completely unarmed in my knowledge of Mormonism. I'm just asking questions. Where are you getting that from? What's your basis for this? Oh, let me go look that up. And again, after four, they were told, uh, don't come to uh, David and his wife anymore. And so they disappeared. Um, but... Uh, a lot of you want to hear about Mormonism. I don't know a whole lot. Uh, Sam and Vocab, they know a bit, but it's definitely not their, their area of specialty. Uh, however, someone who was watching last night was Tony Costa, and he contacted me afterwards, and he said, what are you talking about? I know all about Mormonism. Let's just let's go live. So here we are. <laughs> all right, Tony, so why don't you introduce yourself to everyone uh, before, we, before we go into our topic? Sure. Sure. Uh I'm a uh, Christian apologist from Toronto, Canada, and uh, I uh, teach at a number of seminaries up here in Canada, a number of them, including uh, I'm an instructor with the University of Toronto, and uh, I'm also a teaching pastor with the Oakwood Wesleyan Church in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, quick question right here at the beginning. Quick question right here at the beginning. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead, matter of fact, we'll go ahead and take a couple of comments and questions here at the beginning before we, uh, sure. before we launch into things. Sure. Uh, first question. So, so uh, Jack B here uh, is really starting, and keep in mind, a lot of the people here in the chat are probably starting off knowing little or nothing about uh, Mormonism, except, you know, they know that they knock on the door and that they're nice and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, are Mormons Unitarians? No. Not at all, yeah, by no means. The opposite, right? <laughs> exact opposite. <laughs> Way the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I hope, hope that answers your question, Jack B. And I'm sure as we're going through this, you're going to see why uh, why Tony's saying that. Uh, shout out to Capture Capturing Christianity. Um, that's Cameron Bertuzzi right there in the chat. Uh, hi to Warrior Woman. Gen Z Apologetics. Um, let's see. Let me see if there's any comments we want to address before we get started. Uh, let's see this. Uh, Berger Johansson says, So according to Jehovah's Witnesses, the angels and Jesus are basically a hive mind without individuality. We're not talking about Jehovah's Witnesses tonight. So uh, maybe there's a conversation that was already going on uh, that I was missing. Uh, uh, and, and something that's probably going to come up repeatedly and something that lots of people have noticed. Uh joseph smith and muhammad are so similar excited to hear this stream uh do you agree with that that there are some important similarities between joseph smith and muhammad absolutely absolutely so uh, as i go through the the uh, when i give my brief presentation i'll i'll make those uh, those points yeah the similarities mm -hmm. for sure all right uh dylan b dylan b says david can you please d debate kwaku the mormon why would i debate a mormon i don't study i just said it i mean i just said i don't, I don't know a lot about mormonism uh but there are plenty of people who do and i'm sure would be happy to uh address mormonism um 
We have uh, here. We have Cameron uh, Bertuzzi again. Uh, question: How can I be as cool as David Wood? Well, uh, you can't, Cameron. Uh, you could try, but you. I mean, part of it is developed over a lifetime of experience, and uh, but but part of it you're just born with, and so <laughs> you're 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 just in trouble. Doesn't mean you can't strive, you know. Uh, but yeah, you're pretty much uh, you're pretty much never going to be as cool as me. All right, so. Oh, uh, matter of fact, this is a good this is a good question before we get started. Uh, Black Tuesday Film says, uh, drop some books on Mormonism, though. So, uh, Tony, are there any books uh, that you would re- recommend on Mormonism for people who want to yeah. study it? Yeah, sure. I mean, I still think the classic is still uh, Walter Martin's King of the Cults. He has a whole chapter in there on Mormonism. Uh, he's also written, Walter Martin has also written... Uh, individual books like The Maze of Mormonism. Um, And you may also want to look at James White wrote a book called Letters to a Mormon Elder. Uh, That's a very good book as well. Um, And uh, I would recommend primarily, I think Walter Martin, I think, in my opinion, is uh, is probably the best source when it comes to the the source materials. Uh, But James White, uh, Letters to a Mormon Elder, uh, I believe Ron Rhodes Mm -hmm. Uh, put something out on answering Mormonism as well, as he's done with Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's Um, also a great website, David, let me just mention Mormonism Researched. There's a great website. I think it's called mrm.org. They have an excellent website that that, uh, has a lot of articles, very similar to the answeringislam.org, but they deal with Mormonism. Mm -hmm. All right, so everyone, I hope that uh, hope that helps. If you're interested in doing some, uh, either either getting some books or uh, you just want to do your research online, um, let's see. Uh, question from Karis here: Is the Mormon founder considered like a deity? Uh, no, he's not considered like a deity, but they believe that he will become a god, just like every male member of the Mormon church will become a god in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So, yes, he will be a deity, uh, but that only occurs at the resurrection, what Mormons call exaltation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shout out to Darth, uh, Darth1970 for joining the Boom Squad. Um, Patrick Alexander says, uh, I will say that Mormons are usually very nice people. That is, uh, that's, that's for real. That's part of the reason you have a show like the Book of Mormon, right? You, you can make an, you can make an entire musical making fun of Mormons. Notice there's no, there's no musical mockumentary called the Book of Muslims or, you know, the Quran or something like that. Because, so it's kind of a compliment when people are willing to openly make fun of you because they know that you're not, you're not coming, uh, not coming after them. Uh, Connor says, uh, as an ex-Mormon, I love seeing their false teachings destroyed. Um, uh, Jabari, Jabari says, hi, Tony, have you seen Mormons come to Christ? Yes, I have. I have seen Mormons come to Christ. Uh, One of my best friends in high school was a Mormon who came to faith in Christ. Hmm. Um, What's the situation up there like in Canada? Uh, Is there a a lot of big Mormon presence there or small? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, We've got uh, we've got a number of Mormon temples around the country. Mm -hmm. I actually got to visit the Mormon temple in uh, just north of Toronto in uh, in a city called Brampton. And uh, this was before they consecrated the temple, because after that, only Mormons are allowed in there and, and only upon the recommendation of their local bishop. But I did get a chance to go in through the Mormon temple here in, in, up just north of Toronto. And uh, they're, they're quite active up here. So a lot of them do come from the U.S. as missionaries, and they give two years of their, of their life towards uh, missionary work for the Mormon church. So, yeah, we do get quite a bit up here. You, you know what? You know what's what's weird is uh, I don't have a lot of normal feelings, but uh, when it comes to to Mormons, right? I mean, these guys were the, the guys who would come to you know our house back in the day. They're like two of the nicest guys in the world. They're asking, yeah. "Hey, can you can we help you out with anything? Do you need anything?" You know, they're they and all of them seem like these you know nice young sweet guys and stuff. But uh, they they invited us to their uh, temple or whatever it was. And it was weird because uh, they, so we, we go in there and we, we walk through and stuff like that. And we're walking around and stuff. And I just got this really, really weird feeling of like an evil presence, which I don't, I don't, I don't normally feel like that. Right. I'm not, I'm not someone who, who goes around thinking like what it reminded me of is there were certain times 
in prison where it would just be like the middle of the night, it's dark and like fights would break out and there would just be this feeling of violent tension in the air. Like you could just feel it. Like even, even when it goes quiet afterwards, you feel it. And there's like, there is something bad in here. And uh, anyway, yeah. that, that's what, it, that's what it felt like. But again, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like that. I mean, you know, I, I walked through dark alleys. I spent years in prison. It's uh, it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm nervous about going into, into uh, certain yeah. areas or something like that. But yeah, I got a creepy yeah. feeling. And then I, and then I walked, and then when I walked out with my wife, she's like, did you feel that in there? It just felt like there was yeah. some, something evil in there. So anyway, well, I uh, think that was, I think that was the gift of discerning spirits, David, in oh, yeah? first Corinthians 12. One of the gifts of the Holy spirit is discerning spirits. And I think when you have the Holy Spirit of God, you can tell when something is not in alignment there. So mm -hmm. I've had that experience as well. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and so, if you, by the way, if you're more, if you're a Mormon watching this, uh, you know we're, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to put you down here. We believe that you are wrong. And uh, but, but how we do things is we go through, uh, we go through your position, we examine your position, and allow you to defend your position. And so, uh, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity. We'll give you an opportunity to ask questions and so on. Defend your, defend uh, your, your profit here. Uh, another question. Uh, Big in three, five, six, seven uh, says, is it really common for Mormons to have more than one wife? Um, it depends. Uh, if you're talking about the Utah Mormons, which are the mainstream Mormons, uh -huh. uh, right now polygamy is illegal, although the, the state of Utah is now considering allowing it, which is quite interesting. But uh, there are Mormon sects like the Fundamentalist Church uh, of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, they practice uh, polygamy, and they've uh, a lot of them, a lot of their leaders have been imprisoned. We have a huge uh, Mormon group up here in Canada, out west in British Columbia, in a in a place called Bountiful, Bountiful, British Columbia. There's a Mormon sect uh, that uh, has polygamy, and the interesting thing, David, is is polygamy is illegal in Canada. It's actually a criminal offense, but yet for some reason the government is just sitting on their hands uh, when they should be arresting these people. Um, so there are Mormon splinter groups that do continue to practice uh, polygamy. But the official line from the Utah church is that they did practice polygamy at one time, uh, for at least for 60 years when Joseph Smith uh, came and gave a revelation that Mormons were supposed to practice polygamy. He called it an eternal covenant in which if they did not abide by it, they would be damned. Well, six years later, uh, the president of the United States at the time basically said, you guys don't stop practicing polygamy. We're going to confiscate all your property in Utah uh, and deport you to Mexico. And you know what happened, David? The God of Mormonism, who's absolutely terrified of the U.S. Congress, gave a new revelation. And that new revelation was to stop polygamy. Mm -hmm. And so the eternal covenant of, of polygamy was abolished after 60 years. And the Mormon church stopped practicing it. But they do look forward to the day when it will be reinstated. Well, that's cool, and I guess, I guess that's the uh, that's the benefit of having uh, you know ongoing profits, right? Is that what they call them? Is it, they call it they call that's the current right. guys profits as yes. well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that right. helps. And, and and we see the same with Islam, don't we? Where Allah says one thing, and then and then he seems to have a change of mind and says mm -hmm. the opposite. But then yeah. again, is it is it Allah or is it Muhammad? Mm -hmm. So so it's like Socrates and Plato. Is it Socrates speaking or is it Plato speaking here? Uh, so there's a lot of similarities. The God of Mormonism changes his mind on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, Fred Sanford said, do the Mormons get along with the black Hebrew Israelites? I don't, I, most people don't get along with the black Hebrew Israelites. No. So I, I, I would, I would guess. No, I will say this. Uh, uh, so we, we, uh, we lived in the Bronx for, I guess, I don't know, 12, 13 years or whatever. But um, I used to, I was attending Ford, Fordham University and I would go to these philosophy meetings that we had were, were basically all people who were interested in uh, the problem of evil. And we met at Columbia University. So uh, there are people from several schools who would all go meet at Columbia University. So uh, if you want to catch the two train from Columbia, you basically walk back through Harlem. So I would uh, catch, get off the two train in Harlem, walk over to Columbia, then uh, walk back through Harlem, then uh, jump on the two train. Anyway, I was walking back from Columbia University and got to a really, really... Uh, crowded part that's right there on the uh, on the corner of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and mm -hmm. uh there's just this big crowd there and there were like four or five looking like 17 or 18 year old Mormon missionaries with a little you know elder so and so uh on there 
and they're just in the middle of a crowd taking everyone on. And uh, you, you got to respect that, man. You got to respect someone who walks right in the middle of Harlem and uh, starts starts telling everyone, "Hey, more, you know, Joseph Smith. You all got to you all got to listen to him and stuff like that." So. Uh, uh, yeah, but anyway, the, the I stuck around and I, I talked to one of them for uh, you know about forty five minutes or so. But uh, yeah, if they were walking around there, they would have run into some some uh, black Hebrew Israelites. So that might have been uh, yeah. that might yeah. have been interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting, David, because until June of nineteen seventy eight, the Mormons would not evangelize blacks. Mm. They would not go to Africa. They would not go to any places where there were blacks because Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, the successor of Joseph Smith taught that the blacks uh, were were the, the blacks could not enter the church because they were not able to take the priesthood all the white folks uh, who were the chosen seed as Brigham Young said they could have the priesthood but not the blacks not until all the white folks got it so until 1978 the Mormon church was the most racist cult uh, out there and uh, here's 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 something David let me just quote this to you mm -hmm. um, this is Joseph Smith and this is from his uh, the book, uh, the Mormon uh, publication, Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, pages 269 to 270. This is Joseph Smith. Remember, this is the prophet of God who is believed to be on the same level with Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, uh, Hosea, and so forth. So this is Joseph Smith. Elder Hyde uh, re re uh, inquired the situation of the Negro. I replied, this is about the Negroes, they came into the world slaves, mentally and physically. Had I anything to do with the Negro, I would confine them by strict law to their own species. Now, mm -hmm. that's Joseph Smith basically saying Negroes came into the world slaves mentally and physically. And had he anything to do with them, he would just confine them to their own race. Uh, so much for uh, Galatians 3.28, that in Christ there is no Jew, no Greek, no slave, no free, no male, no female, but one body. But um, what we're told here, and, and tell me, David, if this reminds you of anybody, of anyone in Islam, this is... Uh, the third president of the Mormon Church, who is also their presidents, are believed to be living prophets. Uh, this is uh, John Taylor, the third uh, president. He said this, and I'm quoting the Journal of Discourses, volume 22, page 304. After the flood, we are told that the curse that had been pronounced upon Cain was continued through Ham's wife as he had married a wife of that seed. And why did it pass through the flood? Now, he's talking about the black people here because it was necessary that the devil should have a representation upon the earth. Close quote. David, does that remind you of anybody? Did anyone else say that uh, if you really want to see what the devil looks like, a representation of the devil, who would we go to for that information? Uh, you go to Muhammad, and he said that a guy named Nabtal ibn al-Harith, uh, who was a, described as a sturdy black man with inflamed eyes, uh, looks like the devil. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so Brigham Young also said this, David, uh, how's this for uh, interracial marriage? Uh, Brigham Young, again, prophet, sec successor of Joseph Smith, Journal of Discourses, volume 10, page 110. Shall I tell you the law of God in regard to the African race? If the white man who belongs to the chosen seed mixes his blood with the seed of Cain, the penalty under the law of God is death on the spot. This will always be so, close quote. Mm -hmm. And so, Dave, for night for for, for uh, think about it, just uh, over a century and a half, the Mormon church refused to preach to the black people because they were told that uh, they could not receive the priesthood. But what happened in June of 1978, uh, uh, various groups, anti-racial groups, the NAACP, I believe, and others were criticizing the Mormon church for this. Mm -hmm. And in 1978, God had a new revelation. God changed his mind. And he told the president at that time, Spencer W. Kimball, that the ban on the blacks from entering the Mormon church was lifted and they can come in. This was before all the white people uh, became Mormons, according to Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. So uh, what we're dealing with here is a very similar group here, where in Islam, as you know, all of Muhammad's slaves were black. And uh, there's an over-obsession on Muhammad's color as being white, this white man over here, white armpits, white eye, and so forth. And in, in the Book of Mormon, which I got here, which is their, their uh, principal book, it talks about uh, the, the chosen race as being white and the lightsome. But they, the later editions changed it to pure and the lightsome. They dropped the word white and they inserted the word pure. Uh, but it's there in the original editions of the Mormon of the Book of Mormon. Hmm. Um, well, sure, we have some uh, good Mormons here who are going to defend all of that uh, for us. 
Um, we will just get into a quick uh, uh, presentation on Mormonism here in a second. Just want to try and get through some of these uh, initial questions. Otherwise, we always get I always get too far behind. Um, yeah. Is there is there a limit? So Steffi here says, how many wives can you have in Mormonism? Is there some like limit like, uh, like no. what we had? No limit. No limit. Um, you can have an unlimited number of wives. Uh, Joseph Smith had many wives. Brigham Young had many wives until it was banned by the United States government. But uh, the Mormon Church looks forward to the day when polygamy will be uh, reestablished, and there is no limit. Uh, it sky's the limit in in Mormonism when it comes to polygamy. Hmm. Well, that's uh, that's good to know if you're uh, if you're uh, really into polygamy. If things don't work out and. <laughs> Well, no, you're gonna have you're gonna have to join you're gonna have to join with uh I guess one of the one of the offshoots um, since yeah. it's not allowed uh, technically now. Um, all right, well maybe we should jump into maybe we should go ahead and jump into it. Sure. All right, so first of all, Tony, uh, by way of uh, introduction to the topic, just uh, give us an overview of what Mormonism is, who Joseph okay. Smith is, when this yep. started, things like that. Yeah, this this first begins with uh, Joseph Smith uh, in upstate New York, and uh, Joseph Smith uh, claims, or at least the records of the Mormon Church uh, claim, <clears throat> that in 1820, as Joseph was out in the fields and praying and seeking wisdom, he wanted to know which of the various denominations he should join, and according to the uh, records of the Mormon Church, his first vision was when he was out in the woods and he claims that uh, god the father and jesus christ appeared to him as bodily visible personages and joseph smith asked them which of the various religions he should join or the, the denominations and uh and basically these two personages told him not to join any of them for they are all corrupt and their professors teach abominable doctrines now this is important david because what the mormon church does here is it attacks christianity it was the first to launch an attack on the christian church by declaring all its professors to be abominable and uh, that they are teaching false doctrines and so forth now let me just make a, a caveat here uh, the official version says that joseph smith saw god the father and jesus christ however uh, we have a handwritten document uh, from Joseph Smith where he actually says that in the first vision he actually saw just Jesus Christ. So the, the story, the official story, has, has already changed in including God the Father. Now this is 1820, David. This is important. Three years later, he claims that as he was asleep, he was roused from his sleep by an angel by the name of the angel Moroni. Some other records said it was Nephi, but then... Uh, and then it was changed to Moroni, two different figures in the Book of Mormon. But anyway, the angel Moroni tells Joseph Smith that he was selected to be the prophet of the Restoration, to restore the gospel that was lost. Now, this is important because every earmark of the cults is that they come to restore the lost gospel. Mm -hmm. Muslims make the same claim, don't they? Yep. They come to restore the true religion of God, the true message of Jesus, the true message of Moses. And so <clears throat> Joseph Smith said that he was restoring the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So what does he do? He's told to go to the Hill Cumorah, again, upstate New York. If he goes to the Hill Cumorah and digs there, he will find these golden plates. And written on these golden plates is a record of an ancient civilization that traversed the Atlantic and came to the Americas. And in that book, uh, it was written in Reformed Egyptian. Now remember this, David. It's written in Reformed Egyptian. Joseph can't, his English isn't that good, so Reformed Egyptian is going to be a little more tougher. And so the angel gives them these yeah, it, spectacles. It, it'd be like Muhammad trying to read anything. Exactly. Another similarity. Joseph Smith is said to have been illiterate. Sound familiar? Yeah. More, uh, Muhammad was also illiterate, according to the records. So because he couldn't read Reformed Egyptian because English was, was just as hard, the angel gives them these spectacles called the Urim and the Thummim from the Old Testament. Joseph Smith puts them on, and lo and behold, he looks at the plates, and they become good King James English. That's such good King James English that the Book of Mormon copies swaths of sections from the King James Bible with the mistakes in them. So we know they were they were copied even with the errors in the King James Version. So he claims that he received this. He claims it was the Book of Mormon. Now how did he interpret this? Well, he put on these spectacles, but he also used a hat and he put, uh, the, he would put his head in a hat I don't know how we did this, but he put his head in the hat and he was able to read the Book of Mormon. Hmm. 
Now, that tells you something about Joseph Smith. He was known to be someone who was into uh, 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 not so much amulets, but crystal uh, stones. And he was also known to be a, a hunter of treasure. He would dig up holes. Reminds me of the Seinfeld episode of the dirt people. You know, they're, they're digging up holes all over uh, New York. And Joseph Smith then says that this book was the Book of Mormon. He claims there were three witnesses who saw that those plates, and then there were these other eight witnesses. But then what happens later is Joseph Smith is told by Moroni to return the plates to the hill, Camorra, and then Moroni takes them back into heaven. Does that sound familiar? Well, all the manuscripts that Uthman collected, where are they? Gone. Where mm -hmm. is the original manuscript of the Quran that Hafsa had? Gone. And so the Book of Mormon, the plates are gone. So Joseph Smith tells us that he was told to return the plates. Uh, he told us that the Book of Mormon was the most correct book ever written. But here's the problem, David. Uh, it's been corrected over 3,900 times. And Gerald and Sandra Tan have put together, they are former Mormons, they put, put together this book called 3,913 Changes in the Book of Mormon. And what they do is they show you photostat after photostat of the original 1830 edition of the Book of Mormon, where changes have been made by the Mormon Church. Now, does that sound familiar? We have an mm -hmm. ancient text, but there are changes being made to the text. So we've got omissions. We have additions. That's sounding a lot like the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Joseph Smith then begins the Mormon Church in 1830. So 1830 is the starting date of the Mormon Church. Um, the Mormons hold to uh, four standard works. The first one is the Book of Mormon. Uh, the, second, <clears throat> the second one is the Doctrine and Covenants. And the third one is the Pearl Great Price. So this two in one here. And the last one, David, is the Bible. But they make a, a little quali a qualifying statement here. They believe in the Bible insofar as it is translated correctly. And what that basically means when you flesh it out is wherever the Book of Mormon and Mormon theology contradict the Bible, the Bible is wrong. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot like Islam. Wherever the Bible contradicts the Quran, the Bible is wrong. The Bible's been corrupted. The Mormons make the same claim. Now, what's the book? I, if I if I recall, isn't it the Pearl of Great Price that was supposedly yeah. translated from some scrolls, but then yeah. actual actual people who could translate later went and translated yeah. the scrolls, and it was just like burial spells or something like yeah. that had nothing yeah. to do. What it was is this picture here, David. I don't know if you could see it. Mm -hmm. This picture here. It's an Egyptian uh, uh, hieroglyphs. Joseph Smith claims that he found this. He claims that this was actually uh, a picture of Abraham. Um, but the problem is Egyptologists looked at this and they said, come on, uh, you got this. This has to be a joke. Uh, Egyptologists looked at this and realized that this this is simply this is taken from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. It has nothing to do with Abraham at all. And uh, as I pointed out earlier, Joseph Smith claims that the Book of Mormon was written in reformed Egyptian. But there's only one problem here. Uh, when I was doing my undergraduate studies at the University of Toronto, I uh, spoke to one of my professors who's an Egyptologist specialized in uh, particularly in Tutankhamun's tomb. And I asked him about reformed Egyptian. He said, what is that? I said, you know, reformed Egyptian. The Egyptians wrote this 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 script called reformed Egyptian. He said. There, was ne there has never been such a thing as Reformed Egyptian. It doesn't exist. Well, Joseph Smith made the whole thing up. It never existed. Now, here's, here's where the Mormons uh, really get off track here. The Mormons claim that they have authority that Christianity does not have. And Mormons believe that they have the Aaronic priesthood, which they said was conferred on Joseph Smith by John the Baptist. And they also have the Melchizedek priesthood, which was conferred on Joseph Smith and his uh, peers by Peter, John, and James. Uh, now, they, every Mormon really believes this. Mm -hmm. The only problem with this, David, is that the Mormons really have no authority at all because the Aaronic priesthood ended at the cross, according to Hebrews 7, 14. There was a change of the law, and therefore there had to be a change in the priesthood. The, the, the Aaronic priesthood ended at the cross because the temple worship ended, and in AD 70, the temple was destroyed. Hebrews 7 also tells us in 724 that the priesthood that Christ possesses is the Melchizedek priesthood, and it says this in Hebrews 724. It says he holds his priesthood permanently, and the Greek word there, it's a very interesting Greek word, it's, it's the word apatabatos, 
And a parabatos literally means not liable to be transferred to a successor. And so what that means is only Christ holds the Melchizedek priesthood. It cannot be passed on. Why? Because he lives forever. It can't be passed on because he's eternal. So the only priesthood that exists today is what Martin Luther called the priesthood of all believers. So you and I, David, and all those who are watching this, who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I have this priesthood. Remember John 1, 12, to as many as received them, uh, received him, to them he gave the right, the authority, the power to be children of God. We have our authority directly from Jesus Christ, not from John the Baptist or Peter, John, and James. And 1 Peter 2, 9 says, you are a royal priesthood, called out of darkness into his marvelous light. And Revelation 1, 4 to 5, it says, Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. Jesus Christ has made us priests. The Mormons have no authority. The Aaronic priesthood has ceased. The Melchizedek priesthood has been held by Jesus Christ and is not liable to pass in succession. Now, let me introduce to you the Mormon God. This is the Mormon God, uh, David. Uh, what, 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 one second before we get on the topic. Uh, yeah, some some yeah. people uh, some people are saying, uh, okay. no, no, not the Pearl of Great Price, the Book of Abraham. Uh, what isn't isn't the Book of Abraham part of the Pearl of Great yes. Price? That's what I thought. Yes, yeah, again, is. I'm kind of new yes. to this, but I, I thought it was in the yeah. Pearl. Of, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's two books in the Pearl of Great Price, uh, David. Uh, in the in the Pearl of Great Price, uh, we do have uh, the Book of Abraham, mm -hmm. and. Um, we and so and so, and so that that's Moses. that's the book the in particular as uh, the yes. that part of the Pearl of Great Price that's what was Correct. supposedly translated from these uh, these uh, uh, I guess scrolls that were Correct. in some sort of uh, mummy or something like that. That's right. It's yep. part yep. of the Book of Abraham in the mm -hmm. Pearl of Great Price. And uh, there's also the Book of Moses in the in the Pro Great Price. Mm -hmm. So you're correct. Yes. All right. Little yes. Uh, little side question here. Boo says, "Do you think you go too hard making fun of Muslims?" Uh, Boo, I'm making fun of Muhammad. I'm making fun of Muhammad and his claims, which are stupid and are getting people killed around the world and are uh, leading for the past 14 centuries, but even today, to countless people being slaughtered in the name of Allah. If we look. At the Bible, um, we are we are encouraged to be you know to be to be kind and so on. But the people who are subject to uh, open open ridicule and even mockery in the Bible, they're they're usually uh, there are a couple categories. Um, uh, one of the biggest is people who are leading other people astray. Uh, two is oppressors, people who are oppressing others. And whether you go Old Testament or New Testament, you find some of the most brutal mockery and criticism in history directed towards those kinds of people. And if we think, okay, you know, oppressors, uh, idolaters, um, people who lead other people astray. Who is the greatest example in all of history of someone who does that? Muhammad. Muhammad takes the cake. Muhammad takes the taco on that one. So the point is, if anyone is worthy of mockery and ridicule according to the bible it's muhammad so no i don't think i've gone far enough my friend all right <laughs> tony back to you you were just jumping into yeah. the theology yeah yeah let's look at the theology of mormonism so uh what type of god do the mormons worship so this is dark and covenants uh section 130 verse 22 the father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man and the Son also, but the Holy Ghost has not a body of flesh and bones, but is a personage of spirit. So God is an, a man. God the Father has a body of flesh and bones, as tangible as man. Joseph Smith also goes on to say, God himself was once as we are and is an exalted man. That's teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 345. So remember, God was once a man who became God. And a common saying you hear among Mormons is this, as God, as, as, God is, as man is, God once was, as God is, man may become. This is from Lorenzo Snow, one of their apostles. Uh, Joseph, uh, Lorenzo Snow uh, makes that, that claim uh, in the Gospel Through the Ages, quoted by Milton Hunter, Gospel Through the Ages, pages 105, 106. Notice, David, I'm quoting their sources. I'm making very sure that I'm quoting their sources. Now, this is from the book of Abraham, which is part of the Pearl Great Price, chapter 4, verse 1. And the Lord said, let us go down. And they went down at the beginning. And they, that is the gods, plural, the gods 
organized and formed the heavens and the earth. Now, this is important, David. The, the gods did not create the heavens and the earth. The gods organized and formed the heavens and the earth. Mormonism does not believe in an absolute beginning to time and space. This has ser serious scientific uh, problems uh, mm -hmm. with this view, difficulties. As you know, you know the whole the law of causality and law of entropy and so forth. So they believe the gods organized. Remember, God was once a man who became a god. And God had a father who was also once a man who became a god. And he had a father who was a man who became a god ad infinitum, ad nauseum. It just keeps going. It's, it's as you know, David, in philosophy, there is there, the whole idea of, of an eternal progression or regression of something is considered illogical for mm. something to infinitely regress. Um, Joseph Smith, in his last sermon, uh, said this, and I'm quoting here from the teachings of the Pro prophet Joseph Smith, pages 346 to 347. This is Joseph Smith, his final sermon. Here then is eternal life to know the only wise and true God, and you have got to learn how to be gods yourselves and to be kings and priests to God, the same as all gods have done before you. So notice here, Joseph Smith taught the doctrine of exaltation that men, flesh and bone men, can become gods. So what does that tell us? Mormonism is as polytheistic as Hinduism. They believe that there are an innumerable number of gods in the universe. Brigham Young once said, how many gods are there? I do not know, but there was never a time when there were no worlds and no gods. And so God is an exalted man, and it even gets even worse here, David. He dwells on a planet near the star Kolob. Now, you're probably thinking, why? Well, it sounds like, like uh, Battlestar Galactica. Well, Battlestar Galactica was written by Mormons. And if you remember, the leader wow. of, of the, uh, the leader of the ship, uh, played by Lauren Green, uh, his name was Adama. And the reason why he was called Adama was because Brigham Young actually taught that Adam was the god of this world. Adam was our father and our god, and that he had come to this planet with one of his celestial wives. He was already a polygamist before he got here. And so in Mormonism, they, they now hide this. They call it the Adam-God theory, but it was taught as revelation. They believe that Adam was actually God, the father of Jesus Christ. So he dwells on a planet near the star Kolob. He's a polygamist as well. So God is a polygamist who has many wives, and he procreates spirit children. Now, how a flesh and bone body can procreate invisible children is beyond me. You need a lot of Johnson & Johnson powder to find these kids. But here's the problem, David. You and I, they believe, existed in the pre-existence. So Mormons believe in what's called the pre-existence of the soul. So they believe that you, me, every human being on this planet, we existed in heaven before we came here. Why did we come to earth? To obtain physical bodies so that we can become gods. You can't become a god without a body. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, just like God the Father, had to be, he was once a man, became a god, you come into this world, you, you obtain these bodies, that's why polygamy is huge in Mormonism, so that you can create more bodies so that these spirits can come and, and inhabit these, these bodies. I know it sounds very science fictionist. I know it sounds like something out of Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica, but this is official Mormon doctrine. They truly, truly believe this. Um, they also believe that God is, is progressive. He's not eternally God. The idea of an eternal God is absent for Mormonism. And so... Uh, Mormonism claims, uh, this is um, James Talmadge in Articles of Faith, page 529, it says that, that the very eternal Father is a progressive being. Now, what about the Trinity? Do Mormons believe in the Trinity? Now, Mormons will say, oh, of course we believe in the Trinity, but they don't. So here's Joseph Smith again. Joseph Smith talking about the Trinity, teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 370. He says... I will preach on the plurality of gods. Notice the, the plural there. I have always declared God to be a distinct personage from Jesus Christ, a separate and distinct personage from God the Father, and that the Holy Ghost is a distinct personage and a spirit. Now listen to this. That these three constitute three distinct personages and three gods. 
Now, since when have Christians believed that the Trinity is three gods? Does, do you know anybody else, Dave, who taught that Christians believed that the Trinity was three gods? Do you know anyone else? I can think of someone. <laughs> Does his name start with an M? Yeah. Yeah, Muhammad, right? In, yeah. in, in, in Surah 5, uh, Allah says yeah. to Jesus, Did I ever say to you, Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, did you ever say to mankind, take me and my mother as two gods in derogation of Allah? Mm -hmm. And so more, Muslims believe that we believe that there are three gods. There's Allah, there's Jesus, and there's Mother Mary, and so forth. And uh, could, could, could you could you imagine if Muhammad had come after uh, after Joseph Smith so that he could point to that and and prove well, his uh, prove his well, points? Well, think of it this way. Think of it this way, uh, David. Uh, what did what did what do Muslims believe when we say Jesus is the Son of God? What do Muslims think? Offspring. That, so that, they think that, physical, that, right? Yeah, that, that God had sex with someone and produced Jesus as an offspring. Okay, so let's listen to Brigham Young here. Tell me if there's any similarities. This is Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, uh, Volume 8, page 115. He says, quote, The birth of the Savior was as natural as the births of our children. It was the result of natural action. He partook of flesh and blood, was begotten of his father, as we were begotten of ours. And then he says he was not begotten by the Holy Ghost. What did Brigham Young say? Brigham Young believes, as do Mormons, Jesus Christ was begotten through sexual relations between God the Father and the Virgin Mary. Remember, God has a body, a flesh and bone. He came down just like the Greek gods did, like Zeus did, and, and they, they, they copulated with mortal women. So Joseph Smith at Brigham Young and others believed that God came down, remember he's a man, and had sex with Mary to beget his son, the body of his son, Jesus Christ. So notice Brigham Young and, and the Muslims would be on the same page here in their misunderstanding of what Christians believe. Hmm. And so Mormons deny that Jesus Christ was begotten by the Holy Spirit. They deny that outrightly. Um, um. Go ahead, David. Oh, yep. Just wanted to uh, take a couple of quick, uh, quick questions here. Um, we have uh, Stephen Cullenborn says the Dead Sea Scrolls do not exist. Uh, no idea what why they're wow. talking about that. Uh, he's, they he's probably, yeah, he's probably confusing with the the Dead Sea Scrolls that were in that Museum of the Bible uh, in the U.S. Those were the those were proven to be frauds, but. The ones in the Shrine of the Book in, in Qumran, uh, no scholar denies their authenticity. Yeah, and uh, I actually, I saw them. I went there. Yeah, I went and saw Yeah, I went and saw those uh, over uh, over in Israel. Um, yeah. Then we have something that for some reason is a disturbing trend, uh, not only in, in Islam, but also sometimes in atheism. Uh, I mm -hmm. will see a first comment by a person ever. And then he will say that I'm scared of him or I'm running from him or uh, uh, he's made me angry or something like that. But anyway, K.S. Azim, Act 17 Apologetics. My words made you angry, I see. What in the world are you talking about? I've never seen your words before. But just so you know, dude, I have a very, very low level of patience for people who uh, who come on and, and start saying that I'm running from them or I'm scared of them. So uh, not the way to come around here. So uh, I'm sorry, but bye, my friend. That is one of the things I just... Uh, gosh, I don't have time for this sort of nonsense. It's like it's like it's like someone will run around. Ah, I'm making David upset in there, and like, what do I have to actually respond to this nonsense because I have no clue what this person is talking about, or do I just block and get it over with? And uh, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. But yeah, I'm in kind of a blocking mood if someone's just wasting our time. Uh, but here's one. Uh, here's a more serious one. Lu graduate 100. Do Mormons believe that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers? Yes, that's what I was going to get to next. Oh, yes, okay. they do. Well, then, uh, yes, perfect segue right there. Yeah. Into that. <laughs> right on. Okay, so so we talked about God. God is one God among many gods. He's not the only God. Mormons are polytheists. They believe that there's many gods. And they believe God has a body. The Father has a body. Uh, and that God uh, uh, literally procreated the body of Jesus Christ through through sexual reproduction. Remember Brigham Young said that he was begotten of his father as we are of our fathers. Now, the last time I checked, David, in biology, you and I and all human beings are all begotten by their fathers. It's through sexual intercourse that, of course, uh, you have human life. And so what, J what Brigham Young says is, look, Jesus was begotten by his father, just like you were begotten by your father. And what that is, David, is plain and simple, that is pagan blasphemy. To, to, and in effect, what you have here is they bastardize the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So his father comes, sleeps with his mother, and takes off. And so Jesus walks around without a, without a father because his father's just left. And it makes matters worse because now you have God the Father, who is the father of all our spirits, which would have included Mary. And now you've got, you've got this act of incest where the father of all human spirits comes and has sex with his own daughter. And this is utter blasphemy when you think about it. So when we talk about Jesus, you're not talking about the biblical Jesus. The Mormon Jesus is a counterfeit. He's a great counterfeit. And that's why we're talking about this tonight. We love Mormons, but your leaders have lied to you. Just like the Muslim scholars and the imams have hid truths from the Muslims, Mormon leaders, the presidents, the quorum, and so forth, they have misled you. So what do they believe about Jesus? Jesus, they believe, was the firstborn son of the father, the first son that he conceived in the spirit world was Jesus, and then in the in the physical world through a sexual intercourse with Mary, so that he could have a body. So now, David, I, I don't. I mean, I know you know a little bit of Hebrew, but the the Mormons believe that the Father's name is Elohim, and the name of the Son is Jehovah. Wow. Now, a, any first year any first year Hebrew student will know that the word Elohim is the Hebrew word for God or gods, depending on the context. And Jehovah is the, the, the tetragrammaton, the name Yahweh. Now, what Joseph Smith does is he, he takes these two terms, Yahweh Elohim or Jehovah Elohim, and he splits them into two gods. Elohim is the father, Jehovah is the son. But here's the problem. In the Hebrew Bible, the one true God is referred to by the compound name Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God. And so... Joseph Smith, again, he didn't know Hebrew, neither did Brigham Young. As I said, English was really tough for him, but his Hebrew was, was his Hebrew really sucked here, really bad. Um, but anyway, Jesus is the firstborn son of Elohim. Uh, he had a beginning. So this is not the eternal word of God, David, we read in John 1. He had a beginning in time. And yes, Lucifer was one of his brothers. Remember, the father, our heavenly, Mormons will talk about heavenly father, and guess what? There's also a heavenly mother. Mormons believe in a heavenly mother. Now, all the spirit children that we have in this world are all God's children. That's what the Mormons believe. That's why they're very friendly, because we're all related. And Lucifer was one of God's children, and that makes him a brother of Jesus. So mm. the Mormon Jesus has the devil as his brother. <clears throat> and Jesus, when he came to the world, David, you may not know this, but... Jesus was also a polygamist. He married three women, Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. And the sisters? What? Yes. Hang on, Mary hang on, hang on. I do not know about Mormonism, but I'm willing to bet that Joseph Smith married some sisters. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> but based on that, I, I predict that if someone oh. goes through there, and any of any of you who, who study Mormonism uh, confirm that I'm right, but generally when, when someone wants to say, and he yeah. married sisters, it's usually because yeah. you want to marry sisters and That's you're trying, right. to, you're trying right. to justify. That's right. So Jesus had three wives and he had children. He sired three children. And, and some Mormons would even say, some Mormon authorities have even said, one of the descendants of one of those, uh, those marriages was, surprise, surprise, Joseph Smith. Now, what is interesting here is, uh, you may not know this, uh, David, but did you know that Jesus' wedding, according to Mormon authorities, is recorded in the Bible? It's recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 2. The wedding of Cana, they tell us, was his own wedding. Now, this is weird, because it tells us that Jesus and his disciples and his mother were invited to that wedding. Now, I don't know about you, David, at your wedding and my wedding, I've never seen a bridegroom invited to his own wedding. We usually invite guests to come to our weddings. But they claim that that was Jesus Christ's uh, wedding. And you see, this is because this whole idea of, of, this whole idea of polygamy is, is so important because Jesus practiced polygamy as well. Now, where it gets really bad, David, is where they talk about the atonement of Jesus. Mormons don't believe Jesus made atonement for us on the cross of Calvary. They believe atonement was made for us in the Garden of Gethsemane when he sweat drops of blood. That's the point, they tell us, the atonement was made. And so Mormons, if you notice, when you went to that Mormon church uh, with your wife, David, you will notice there's no crosses in the Mormon churches, or they call them stakes. There are no crosses on the Mormon temples. There's a lot of Masonic symbols all over the place. We can talk about that, David, because 
Joseph Smith was also a Mason. He became a, a 32nd degree Mason in one day. But the Mormon uh, temples are filled with Masonic symbols and Masonic terms and secret handshakes and so forth and veils and private ceremonies. Um, Jesus paid atonement for our sins in the Garden of Gethsemane. They don't believe that Jesus Christ's blood atones for all sin. They will actually tell you that. Brigham Young said there are some sins for which the blood of Christ cannot atone. He says you have to make atonement for it by being put to death. And this is why, David, for a long time, there was a long-standing tradition in the state of Utah to use uh, to use shooting uh, that is a firing squad as the means of execution. Why? Because they believed, Brigham Young said, you have to shed your own blood to make atonement for your sins. And this was called the doctrine of blood atonement in Mormonism. And that is why Utah, for the longest time, had the firing squad as its principal way of executing criminals so that they could atone for their own sin by whether it was murder or rape, whatever it may have been. But what a blasphemy this is against the perfect work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, who said, it is finished. First John 1, 7. This, John would have been absolutely shocked to hear the Mormons speak like this. What does First John 1, 7 say? The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Not some sins, not some grievous sins. All sins are covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So Mormons do not believe that Jesus Christ's death atones perfectly. They don't believe in salvation by grace, just like the Mormon, uh, the Muslims. Muslims don't believe we're just saved by, by grace alone. They believe we need to work for it. We need to do good works. More, uh, the Mormons teach the same thing, that by obeying the principles of the gospel, by being baptized and so forth, uh, we can become saved. Uh, and it says in the Book of Mormon that we are saved by grace after all we can do. And so the emphasis there is on on works. Well, they deny the deity of Christ. He's not the eternal God in human flesh. He's not the second person of the Trinity. They believe he became God in the resurrection. And in terms of his second coming, David, uh, you should be proud as an American to know that Jesus Christ is going to return uh, to Jackson County, Missouri, and he's going to inst institute his kingdom there. And so think about the New Jerusalem is not somewhere coming from heaven to earth. The New Jerusalem is going to be established in Jackson County, Missouri. And uh, so the Mormons believe in the second coming of Jesus. Uh, we can go also into uh, talking about uh, 20 years after Muhammad died, David, uh, what happened? Was there, was there a party, a faction that uh, came out in Islam? What happened 20 years after the death of Muhammad? Do you know of any other group that rose and said, you know what, we should follow this guy and not these guys over here? You remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. What happens after Muhammad's death? There's uh, a debate about what? Well, there's, yeah, who, who, the, uh, who the true authority is. And uh, so right. you, you eventually end up with the, the, the Sunni-Shia split and you end up with all That's kinds right. of other splits and the Matazalites right. and so on down the line. But uh, right. yeah, it was mass confusion after, uh, after right. he died and no one could agree on, on the true successor. Right. Mm -hmm. So 20 years after Muhammad's death, you have a party. The word Shia means a party, mm -hmm. uh, the party of Ali. Party of Ali. And uh, mm -hmm. the, the Sunnis had the, the, the rightly guarded caliphs. And the Sunnis do accept Ali as the fourth rightly guarded caliph. But the Shia said, no, 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 it, it must come from Ali. It, it must be a successor. It must be Hussein. It must be his progeny that comes from the line of the prophet's family and so forth. Well, guess what happened 20 years after Joseph Smith's death? There was a debate in Mormonism, and the debate was, should we follow Brigham Young or should we follow Joseph Smith's son? So Joseph Smith had a son, and his son uh, became the leader of a breakoff group called the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they were centered in Independence, Missouri. They are now today known as the Community of Christ, so be very careful. They changed their name to the Community of Christ, but they are still... Uh, they are still part of the reorganized church. The only difference is they've rejected Brigham Young and all these these teachings. So, you know, David, we could also talk about baptism for the dead. Mormons practice baptism for the dead, which means that uh, if a loved one died and you want them to become Mormons in the resurrection, you can be baptized by proxy on behalf of them, just like Muslims can do the Hajj by proxy. They can go to Mecca perform the Hajj on behalf of someone else, and the law will accept it of them, which is funny because they keep telling us the idea of a vicarious atonement is wrong, someone taking your place. But in Islam, 
you can do the Hajj on behalf of someone else if they're ill, right? So, uh, so Mormons have baptized presidents like George, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. All of these guys will become Mormons to their great surprise in the resurrection. And, and they will baptize people. That's why Mormons have the longest genealogical records in the world. So if you ever look at Ancestry.com and groups like that, many of them, Ancestry.com is owned by the Mormon Church. And that's because they're interested in genealogies so that they can baptize living members for those who've passed on. So when you look at this, uh, David, what we find here is there's nothing resembling biblical Christianity. Mm -hmm. Mormonism is a fraud. Mormonism is no different than the, the, the polytheism of the Hindus. Uh, Joseph Smith was not a prophet of God. Uh, Joseph Smith's prophecies failed. He predicted the coming of Christ. Didn't happen. Um, and we can talk about, uh, again, I mean, there's the whole issue of polygamy. We, there's the whole issue of the discrimination uh, against the blacks and so forth. And and the the whole temple thing, you know, one of the things we know about Joseph Smith is the links to masonry, Freemasonry. And uh, when Joseph Smith was assassinated in 1844 in Carthage, Illinois, he was in prison with his brother Hiram. And it's interesting, David, that Mo Muslim, uh, Mormons today will tell you Joseph Smith died as a martyr. Mm -hmm. Right now, we yeah. as Christians, we know a lot about martyrs. Right. OK. When Joseph Smith was in prison, a whole bunch of folks showed up to to basically get rid of him because he was sleeping with their daughters, taking them as wives and so forth. So these guys were saying, we got to take this guy out. Look what he's done to our daughters, our families. Anyway, the he was he was he was in this Carthage jail, which you could still visit today. Uh, and um, a mass, a mob just showed up and they started forcing their way into the jail and they went up the stairs. They were armed. And Joseph Smith. This is interesting. And his brother Hiram, Joseph Smith, has a pistol. He has a gun in his person. Think nice. about this for a minute. The guy's in prison. He's got a pistol. They didn't have metal detectors back then. He takes out a pistol, and as they're firing at him, he's firing back at them and cursing them. Now, that's typical martyr behavior, right? Martyrs fight back their aggressors. Or do they say, right here to the glory of God? No, so this is what this is like. This is like This is like gangster martyr. Yeah, man. You know I mean? So, so look what happens now. May, hey, one statement. second, one second, one second. Maybe, yeah. m maybe in Reformed Egyptian, the word martyr means gangster. <laughs> I mean, maybe you don't even think it about that. Probably is. All right. Maybe, maybe. So, so anyway, he's cursing back at the people who are shooting at him, and he's shooting back at them. That's not typical martyr behavior. Anyway, he goes to the window, and. Uh, and he sees this crowd below. He was going to jump out the window. And what he does is he raises his hands like this, David. He raises his hands and he says, oh, Lord, my God. And then he's shot dead and he falls out the window. Now, what a lot of folks don't realize is in masonry, there's a call of distress. There's a code. There's, there's a code that masons follow. And the code of distress is this. A fellow mason... When he is in danger, he raises up his hands like this, and he cries out the following words, Oh, Lord, my God, is there no help for the widow's son? They shot him, David, before he was able to finish that sentence. Because if he had said, Oh, Lord, my God, is there no help for the widow's son? Those masons down there, because he knew them from the lodge, they would not be permitted to kill him. They would have to save his life. Before he he finished that that sentence, they made sure he, they got him, and he fell out the window. So we know about Joseph Smith's connection to masonry. Uh, if you look at the symbols of the Mormon Church, uh, even even the aprons that they wear uh, in the in the secret uh, services, uh, the passwords, they make bloody oaths in the temple. Um, a lot of them uh, are, are. We're now hearing that they've stopped doing that, but the very concept of having your 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 throat slit if you divulge the secrets of the, of the temple uh, or, or having your, your bowels being disemboweled. These are all part of masonry. Um, and they also wear undergarments, David. Now, I'm not wearing a, a Mormon holy underwear here, but they do wear undergarments uh, that they receive once they go to the temple. They're called temple endowments. Um, and so next time you meet your Mormon missionaries at the door, uh, chances are they're probably wearing th these 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 undergarments, these temple undergarments, and it's meant to protect them. Okay. Um, so anyway, I think you could get you get 
you you get the uh, the idea here, David, that we're not dealing here with a bona fide Christian movement that has this has nothing in common with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And remember, Joseph Smith said the angel Moroni, which you will find on the top of every Mormon temple, that golden figure with the trumpet, right? Utah, mm -hmm. Salt Lake City just had an earthquake and a part of it got damaged. I think the arm fell off or something. Um, but uh, remember what Paul said in Galatians 1.69. He said, I'm astonished that many of you are following a different gospel, which is really not another. And then he says this, there are some who are trying to distort and pervert the gospel of Christ. And then he says, but if we, that is the apostles, or an angel should preach to you a gospel other than the gospel that you received, let him be anathema. That word anathema is the strongest Greek word in the New Testament. It means to be under the divine curse of God. And Paul says, if we come back and we give you another message that is different from the one we originally gave you, count us accursed, count us damned. But did you notice what he said there in Galatians 1.8, David? If we or an angel from heaven mm -hmm. should come and give you another gospel, that angel is to be anathema. How did Mormonism begin? With an angelic apparition to Joseph Smith telling him that he was called to restore the gospel. Mormonism is a fulfillment of Galatians 1.8. And is there a similarity with Islam? How did Islam get started? An angel came to Muhammad. Apparently, Jabril, Gabriel came to Muhammad. And what did he tell him? He was chosen to be the prophet of Allah to restore the true religion of God's prophets. The similarities, David, are all over the place. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, apart from Muhammad, I mean, apart, I'd have to give Joseph Smith rank number two in terms of, you know, we're told, hey, here's the gospel. Um, yeah. We're told here's the gospel in the book of Acts and in the letters and so on. Uh, Jesus died on the cross for sins, rose from the dead. Um, he's Lord. And we're also told false teachers, false prophets are going to come. You've got Muhammad who comes along uh, centuries later and he agrees with the Christians on so much. You know, Christians, you know, uh, you know, I, I believe in the, the virgin birth like you do. I believe Jesus performed all these miracles. I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. See, we're all we're on the same page. Uh, but you have to just you have to reject Jesus, death, resurrection and divine nature. And so he's the perfect. He's the like the ultimate example of a, of a biblical false prophet. But then you get to Mormonism and it seems like they're yeah. claiming it seems like they're claiming to agree with everything we believe, they're just massively redefining and reinterpreting That's everything. Absolutely. Perfect way of putting it, David. They are redefining all the terms. And so when I when I talk to Mormon missionaries, when I get to meet them, they will always say they will say to me, We 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 love Jesus Christ. Look at look at our name tags, the Church of Jesus Christ. And if you notice the name Jesus Christ now is in the larger font than the rest. They're trying to emphasize their that they are the Church of Jesus Christ. Of Latter-day Saints and so I will ask them this question David I'll say do you believe in Jesus they'll say absolutely and I'll ask them this question which one they'll say what do you mean which one yeah which Jesus you know 2 Corinthians 11 3 to 4 says beware of those who preach another Jesus which Jesus do you believe in and I asked them you know uh, the other Jesus he's the spirit brother of Lucifer and the other Jesus he's one God among many gods and the other Jesus his blood does not atone they said well that sounds like our Jesus and I said you have the wrong Jesus let me show you the real Jesus let's go to John chapter 1 and so what we need to understand is this Mormons are nice people I mean they're nice they're nice Muslims there's nice Mormons there's nice Jehovah's Witnesses but we're not attacking Mormons personally we are investigating Mormonism, just like we're investigating Islam. And we are investigating the Book of Mormon. And, and David, I mean, if you ever need some good comic relief, this book is the best book for comic relief. I mean, uh, there's a story in here uh, uh, in the Book of, of Ether where there's two guys and they're fighting. One's called Coriantumr, the other guy's called Shiz. That's a pretty cool name, Shiz. Uh, so Coriantumr are fighting with swords. And then it says Coriantumr cut Shiz's head off and Shiz falls to the ground. Now notice without a head. And then it says, and then Shiz got up on his arms and breathed his last. 
with what? What did he breathe his last with? Mm -hmm. I mean, his head's over there. What's he breathing <laughs> through, his arteries? And, and David, I'm serious. I mean, you know, the, the book of jo the, the book of Jacob in the Book of Mormon, you've got Jacob saying to his brethren at the end of the book, he says, I bid you farewell. He goes, I bid you farewell, adieu. <laughs> And, and and my Mormon friends, my Mormon friends go to me and they say, so what's wrong with that? I said, the problem with that is that adieu is a French word in the mouth of the Hebrew prophet written about seven year, 700 years before there was any French. Mm -hmm. There was no French language at that time. And, and so it, it's like the, the Spanish adios, which means to God. Mm -hmm. And so here you have a Hebrew prophet speaking French. Uh, with his contemporaries. Um, so, but again, Joseph Smith said that that this was the most correct book ever written. Um, but pretty, anyway, pretty 30, good. 30, every, yeah, every, every 30, <laughs> after uh, over 3,900 changes, uh, I mean, we can talk about even the, the Quran, the changes in the Quran, the omission of, of ayahs and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> Ubay bin Qab's version uh, and, and Ibn Masud. But anyway, I think by now we can tell we're, we're not dealing with a, with a the, the real the real thing here when we talk about Mormonism, it's not Christian at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, uh, uh, I'm going to take a look at some uh, comments and super chats real quick, and that we definitely have to be off by 9:30 because I'm doing a uh, Skype session with a, uh, a Ratio Christi group at 10. Um, they're in California, so it's seven for them, but it's uh, it's 10 here on the East Coast, so uh, I'll have to uh, get off by 9:30 so I can set up for that. A uh, couple couple uh, comments though, and guys, we're gonna look at some comments here. Uh, could be related, could could be uh, could be off topic. Don't really care much. Uh, was uh, uh, with these next. What do we got? 22, 23 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, Nicolou said, uh, for David, sorry for deviation from subject. I fast and is the first time in my life. Can you give us, the people who want to fast, uh, some advice? Thank you. Um, well, following the Bible, don't walk around uh, making it obvious that you're fasting. In other words, don't. Uh, this goes for prayer. This goes for fasting and so on like that. It's okay to ask for advice or something like that. But uh, don't do these kinds of things to to show other people that you're that you're doing them right um so jesus jesus uh rebuked uh certain people of his time for doing that so the the goal according to jesus number first thing first thing you want to do is make sure you're doing this uh only for your relationship with god and not to be praised for uh for your holiness um but uh second um you know meal times uh when you would normally be eating so whatever meal times you would normally have uh do something like you know you know, Bible reading, Bible study, something like that during during those times. In other words, you're you're replacing your meals with a different kind of uh, bread, bread from bread from heaven. Uh, Tony, you have any thoughts on that? No, I agree with you, David. That it's it's between you and the Lord, and uh, but don't do it for show. Uh, don't do it because you want to be seen by others and 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 praised as being pious. That's between you and the Lord, and the extent of the fast again is between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it really is, at the end of the day, uh, a personal thing between, between you and, and God. Mm -hmm. um, Turb, in the, Turb is in the uh, super chat. He said, what, what would Muhammad's name be if he was a rapper? Lil Pimp? Um, I don't know. I, I, think I, could, I think I could come up with... Uh, I think I could come up with some... I'd have to think about it a little while, but may, maybe we should come up with some, some good uh, rap names. Um, Andy, uh, Andy says, is it true they were heavily persecuted by Southern Baptists back in the day. Uh, I guess uh, is Mormons. he talking about Mormons? Mormons. Mm -hmm. um, well, there was tension, to be sure. There was tension. I think a lot of it had to do with polygamy. Uh, but the Mormons uh, as well were involved. Uh, the Meadows, uh, the metal, what's it called again? The Meadows Mountain Massacre was something that the, the Mormons were involved in, and they massacred a lot of folks. Uh, mm. You can look that up. So the, the, the Mormons did not have their hands clean either on this issue. Um, but I think the controversial issue was their polygamous views. Uh, the fact that they were taking young women and converting them to Mormonism and then marrying them. Uh, much like uh, Muhammad came along and, uh, and would take women like the Jewish woman that he took and, and killed her father and husband and basically took her and raped her. Uh, and then she goes, she goes in and poisons his dinner. Um, so, yes, um, there was a lot of tension back and forth between the two. But remember, it wasn't the Church of Jesus Christ that attacked the Mormons. 
It was Joseph Smith in the name of God who attacked all of Christianity by denouncing it as abominable and their teachers as teaching false doctrine and so forth. Um, Vinsanity997 says Joseph Smith should be in the boom boom room. Him and Muhammad could talk about rewriting history, polygamy, and marrying underage girls. Uh, yes, unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong, uh, Joseph Smith will be in the boom boom room. We've simply had too many requests for that, and it's just too perfect a uh, too perfect a matchup. Uh, Lisa, look uh, with a super sticker. Thank you. Uh, first last says, God bless you, David and Tony. Lord bless you and watch over you and your families. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you, first last. And Michael Gallimore said, can you comment on why the reorganized Church of Latter-day Saints, Community of Christ, believe that Joseph Smith didn't teach or practice polygamy? So is that correct? That they're not just, they're not, they're not yes. just, yeah, they're, so they're not just saying, hey, you know, it changed. They're saying ne never happened. Yeah, it's it's like the Qurani's saying, mm. no, 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 Muhammad never said those things in the Hadith. He never said those things in Bukhari uh, or in or in, in Muslim. Just like the Shias say, uh, everything the Sunni uh, Hadith collectors attribute to Muhammad are all lies. And, and, and Aisha was a liar. And Aisha is the one who killed uh, Fatima and so forth and so on at the Battle of the Camel. Very similar. So the reorganized church, the community, uh, the community uh, of Christ, what they say is that Joseph Smith, never taught polytheism. Joseph Smith never taught uh, polygamy. And so the reorganized church would say, no, we are monotheists. We believe there's only one God. Uh, they deny, from what I understand, they don't believe the Holy Spirit is, is God. They believe only the Father and the Son is God. The problem with that is that in, in Joseph Smith's last sermon, which was the King Follett funeral sermon, uh, that sermon was written by... Um, uh, a, a very good number of scribes who, who recorded what Joseph Smith said. And Joseph Smith, uh, before witnesses, openly said, you have all got to learn to become gods yourselves, just like all the other gods did. And so the fact that there were uh, many witnesses writing down what Joseph Smith was preaching that day and their, and their written notes agree on what he said, it's a pretty good established fact that Joseph Smith did teach polytheism. In terms of poly polygamy, I think the the early witnesses there 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 were other witnesses uh, at the time of Joseph Smith who bore witness to the fact that Joseph Smith had taken uh, uh, many young girls, converted them to Mormonism, and married them. The evidence is very strong in favor of Joseph Smith being a polygamist. And so I think what the reorganized church tried to do is basically they tried to uh, save face. Uh, they wanted to really polish up uh, Joseph Smith. But I think the evidence, David, the historical documentary evidence is way too strong against the, the reorganized church's claims. All right. Um, now we have uh, we have a few questions along similar lines. Let me pull a couple of them up real quick. Um, so Alex, uh, Alex says, please give us advice on how to address Mormons. So please give us advice on how to address Mormons. And let's see one more along these lines, uh, just because there are several of them. Um, Tony, what's the first thing I could say to a Mormon cousin? So general idea. Now we're talking about actually talking yeah. uh, to Mormons. What advice do you have? Yeah, I mean, what I would say is, uh, you know, what's your view of Jesus? And and uh, uh, do you believe God's revelations are consistent? That is what God says in the Bible. If the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, and incidentally, David, the Book of Mormon doesn't teach any of these things. It doesn't teach polytheism. It doesn't teach priesthood. Uh, you need the, excuse me, uh, it doesn't teach polytheism, it doesn't teach polygamy, uh, it doesn't teach that God is a man with a body and so forth. It's the later revelations like Darkening and Covenants and Pearl Great Price that start teaching this. So it's very similar to Islam, hmm. where the, the Quran says Muhammad didn't do any miracles, but then the Hadith say, yes, he did, he did perform miracles. So there's a progression there. What I would do is I would say, do you believe God's revelations are consistent? And they would have to say, well, yes, of course, God's revelations would have to be consistent. And then I would say, uh, what would you do if 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 uh, the Bible contradicted what you believed? Most Mormons would say, well, it doesn't. Uh, what I do is I play the if game. If, what if, what if? And the moment they say, well, if it contradicts the, 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 the Bible, I, I would have to seriously consider that. Now, if they say something like, I'll have to pray about that, there's nothing to pray about. If God's word contradicts Mormonism, what's there to pray about? It's, it's mm -hmm. time to leave Mormonism. So the next thing I would do is I would say, well, um, 
Can we look at John chapter 1? John chapter 1 is a great text because in John 1, we're told that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Now, this is important. Mormons believe Jesus was created, that God the Father and Heavenly Mother procreated the first spirit child. John 1, 1 says the Word already existed. He had no beginning. He was in existence from all eternity. And then it says that he was face to face with God. And then it says, and this is really important, he was God. Verse 3 says all things were created by him. It doesn't say it was organized by him. It was created by him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. And the key verse is verse 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, if the word is God and the word becomes flesh, who becomes flesh? God becomes flesh. Hmm. Mormonism says Jesus Christ is not God himself in human flesh. Remember, he had to become a God. John 1 says he is eternally God and he became flesh. Mormons have it the other way around. He was once a man who became a God. So John 1 verses 1 to 3 and verse 14 are lethal to Mormon theology. And I would ask that you guys uh, memorize those passages. Um, Ruben said, uh, hey, Tony, Ruben from L.A. Were yes, jo I know Ruben. Were Joseph Smith and Muhammad inspired by Satan? And so this goes along the lines, if people are wondering what the question is, uh, this goes along the lines, I think, of, you know, obviously we believe there are people in history who are complete frauds and charlatans, right? They were, uh, they claim to, uh, they claim to be prophets, but only in, in order to dupe people. But there are also people that I would say actually really believe that they're prophets and uh, may have been getting revelations from somewhere else, but not from God. So what do you think about Joseph Smith and Muhammad? In other words, were these guys sincere? Were they sincere? Did they sincerely believe they were prophets or were they just tricking everybody? Well, I think with Joseph Smith, I think that I think we have a charlatan here. Um, his first vision where he claims he saw God the Father and God the Son there's contradictory reports. The one that we have written by his hand, he says that Jesus Christ appeared to him. Uh, and then later he said it was uh, uh, an assembly of angels. A whole bunch of angels appeared to him. And then the official version is God the Father and God the Son appeared to him. Um, I think we do have a charlatan here. Uh, we know from Joseph Smith's um, neighbors that he was known as a person uh, who used to give high tales like he used to be a, a big storyteller. He would tell them where you can find hidden treasure and so forth. So he was known for making these these huge claims and so forth. Uh, but nonetheless, as you know, uh, David, Satan can still use charlatans. If you want an example of that, just look at what's been happening with, you know, Kenneth Copeland and his whole, uh, you know, he's just devastated coronavirus uh, on March 29th. There's no more coronavirus as of March 29th. Um, and so what I think is you have a charlatan here, but at the same time, I think you have someone who was used by Satan to deceive a, a lot of people, a ton of people. Mm -hmm. um, a couple more. Uh, Magdalene said, uh, so it's the it's April 7th here. Is it your birthday? Uh, yeah, if it's April 7th there, then I guess it would be my birthday. It's still April 6th here, so it's not my birthday yet. But uh, yeah, we'll be live. Uh, we'll be live last night. Me, Vocab, I think John McRae, uh, maybe Adam. Anyway, several of us going to be on live tomorrow night. So uh, yeah, then it'll it'll definitely be my be my birthday uh, then. Um, let's see. We we have a we have a bunch of comments about Muhammad's rap name. Uh, I saw I saw Lil Revelation earlier. Um, now we have Isaiah Braxton with Lil Prophet. Um, if you want to go with something with Lil in it, I would I would name him like Lil Girl Lover or something like that. If you you know if you want to if you want to Lil Girl Lover <laughs> or, or or Mo Diddley or something Mo Diddley <laughs> Mo Diddley. Um, wow. Yeah. All right. Now I'm sorry. I'm getting some. Uh, I'm getting some. Uh, I'm getting some uh, ideas for some uh, future videos where Muhammad decides to become a, a rapper. And it would actually make sense if Muhammad were in the 21st century, that's what he would do. He would have like battle raps, I guess. And he would say, my my raps are better than everyone else's. And so that means that I'm a prophet. And they would be like horrible, horrible, horrible rhymes. And But he would be claiming to be better than Eminem and Jay-Z and everyone else. 
Yeah. Um, and all and his followers who are completely loyal to him would be cheering him on, saying, "Oh yeah, yeah. that's that's the greatest stuff ever." And, and no, yeah, yeah, everyone else fails. And so yeah, I think we would. Uh, it would be like uh, Little John in the background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Katie O'Brien says, can you invite someone on your channel to talk about Scientology? It's really weird. Uh, we had a lot of comments along the way saying that, that Mormonism sounds like, uh, sounds uh, similar in, in terms of uh, some of the craziness of certain claims to Scientology. But yep, I'm sure, I mean, gosh, if we stay locked down long enough, I'm sure we'll probably cover every topic that exists in the entire world world uh so yeah we got uh we got nothing but time while we're all while we're all on lockdown um all right any more comments along the way here uh mike yeah it's 9 21 so we'll probably be wrapping up now because i am going to i'm going to uh be doing another uh another stream here but with ratio christie um all right tony well uh we're gonna wrap up now so all right. basically any final thoughts take as long as you need um final thoughts yeah, for, for any mormons I, I, and keep in mind there have been some mormons here in the uh in the in the good. chat good i'm glad they they joined us tonight and i just want them to know once again uh we're not here because we hate you we're not here to demean you uh we are here because we want to investigate mormonism we love you enough to tell you the truth and the truth of the matter is the mormon jesus Oh, it just uh, switched there for some reason. Ah, you're trying to show uh, us your, your cool... Uh, yeah, your my, cool, my degree. Trying here. to brag and throw it okay, in everyone's faces. Yeah, yeah we'll... Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll there you go. All right. we'll, we'll all listen to what you say <laughs> because we saw it. We saw it. <laughs> okay, I, now I... Okay, I got my credentials now. So, yeah, well, what I want our, our, Mor our Mormon friends to know is we love you, but unfortunately, you've been duped by, uh, by your leaders. The, the, the Jesus of Mormonism is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible is the eternal Word of God made flesh, the Son of God, the eternal Son, not the created Son, but the eternal Son of God who came into the world to save sinners. And that his death on the cross, not in the Garden of Gethsemane, but on the cross, Jesus Christ paid the ultimate penalty for our sins, that we can be reconciled to a holy God. There's nothing you can do to save yourselves, no amount of baptisms for the dead, no amount of... Um, uh, blessings from the temple uh, or the bishop or whatever it may be, none of that, not, not even the reading of the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is a demonstrable fraud, as is the Doctrine and Covenants. God has given us his word in the Holy Scriptures, and it is my prayer that you will come to know the real Jesus, the one who is God's word made flesh. You can read about him in John 1, verses 1 to 3 and verse 14, and that gift of salvation is available to you. He's not the spirit brother of Lucifer. Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe. All things were made by him and without him, nothing was made. And he made you and he made me and he showed his love for us. Even this week, as we enter in this Passion Week, as we move towards Good Friday and of course, Easter Sunday, we see his love that he came to demonstrate to the world, to sinners. He came to pay a debt that he did not owe because we owed a debt that we could not pay. And I hope and pray that you will come to know this Jesus. Turn from your sins. Call on his name. Believe that he died for you on the cross of Calvary. Believe that he was raised again. And you will know life everlasting. And so that is my prayer for you. We want you to know that we love you. We care about you and that you're not listening to this program tonight by chance. This is not a coincidence. You're listening to this program tonight because God wants you to hear this message. And I pray that you do not reject this message. Don't harden your hearts, but turn to Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Thanks, David. I want uh -huh. to wish you a happy birthday, buddy, for tomorrow. So all right. All the best to you. All right. All thank you, uh, you, thank you, uh, Tony, for for joining us here. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. I think we had, uh, I think we had over nine hundred there. For uh, not sure what we have now. We were we had nine hundred uh, last time I looked. Um, and yep, uh, should be back live again tomorrow night, eight o'clock, with uh, with several people. And I will be doing something else in thirty five minutes. I have a video that I recorded and edited already, so if I can actually upload that and have it up in about ten minutes, then uh, should be a, a new video popping up here in a few. All right, catch y'all later.